the apparent triviality of it. Well, now, uh, talking of triviality, do you think these uh, plasticine puppets uh, were a mistake? Personally? Mm. No, I don't, because I think that to any strategic uh, planner in the Conservative Party, they should have indicated that it was likely that the whole style of the Labour campaign would be primarily an attack upon the Conservatives, and therefore was not likely to be concentrated on the constructive issues. Well, there is, uh, sitting by you is David Kingsley, uh, head of the voluntary uh, publicity committee of the Labour Party, an advertising man, and he uh, conceived the idea of this. Uh, did you not, Mr Kingsley? Yes, that's true, with uh, others, And yes. do you think it rebounded? I don't think it rebounded at all. I don't see how it could have done. It arose because it seemed to reflect what most people seem to think, and uh, therefore I, I think it's unlikely that it was rebounding. It'll, it'll rebound if, in fact, uh, the highly unrepresentative first results were typical of what's going to happen throughout tonight, but uh, otherwise I don't think it did. I see that Ladbrokes are offering two to one against Labour. Do you feel that uh, you may have handled the Labour campaign wrongly, or do you still have faith in a Labour victory? Oh, I have faith in a Labour victory, and I've been working for it ever since the last election. And it's not just me. There are a lot of other people involved. The contribution I've made has been fitting in with what a lot of other people have been doing. Now, what I um, wonder is this. All these advertising techniques, whether this for the Labour Party or whether that's those circles behind Mr yes. Heath, mm. did they really any of them make any difference? I mean, was it not, whichever way it goes, the mood of the country, the arguments such... Well, of course, yes. I mean, I agree with you absolutely. And effective advertising or publicity tries to pick up the mood of the country. It doesn't invent something and attach it. It tries to pick it up. Thank you very much. We'll perhaps hear more of you now, Cliff. Well, I sincerely hope we do, Robin. You're not going to let them go now, are you? Uh, we're going down now to North Devon, to Jeremy Thorpe's constituency, where there are all sorts of rumours of a recount. Uh, to confirm or deny David Lomax. Well, Cliff, let me first of all deny those rumours of a recount. Here at the Queen's Hall, Barnstable, we're expecting the result in about an hour from now, at about a quarter past midnight. We had the first ballot boxes in at about four minutes past ten from the first polling booth, which is in fact only about ten yards away from the count here. There are 50 polling stations in all in this constituency, 90 ballot boxes which have been coming in from villages on the edge of Exmoor and all the way down the Tor Valley. It's been a sort of thundery day, cold, showery this afternoon, with possibly a lower turnout than before. Of course, the result here is particularly significant because this is the seat that Jeremy Thorpe, the Liberal leader, has held for the last 10 years. At the last election, the Conservatives reduced his majority down to a very slender 1166, and this time, instead of having two opponents, he's got three. A Democratic candidate, uh, a Labour candidate, and his old Conservative enemy. We'll know the result at about a quarter past midnight. David Lomax in Barnstable. Yeah. Uh, Wolverhampton is expected in a minute. A quick word from Robert McKenzie. Well, I'd like a recap on these sensational three opening results. We've had three swings to the Conservatives in these results, ranging from 5.6 up here at Guildford to 6 at Cheltenham to 5 at Salford. But so far, these results are all in the range of a safe Conservative majority. Much too early to go hard on that except it is sensationally difficult, different from what would have predicted from the average opinion poll predictions which were down here. This well, is, on the face of it, so far, heading in the direction of a sensational uh, upset. But we don't know yet for sure, of course. The figures are being handled around. I can see in Wolverhampton at the moment, but let's go down to Labour Party headquarters and David Holmes for a quick word there. He's got Mr Nicholas with him, I see. Uh, Mr Nicholas, spirits are very high at the moment in Transport House here, but the first results point to something like a, a swing of over 5% of the Conservatives. What do you say about this? I'm not worried about that because uh, we also have evidence of high polls in the places where we have the seats. So I'm not particularly disturbed about it. You think uh, that this is just something that's reflected from some seats, it will be balanced out by others? Yes, well, we are being assured in, from the regions that there's been a very high poll. I should begin to get worried if we lose seats, and we haven't had any evidence of that yet. But in Stan Orme's seat, uh, we just heard there was only a 65% poll. Yes, I would say that that's very unusual, uh, taking what the information that we've had up and down the country so far. Uh, where have your reports of highest turnouts come from today? Well, particularly in the, uh, in the Midlands and uh, we've been told that we've gone as high as a 90% poll amongst uh, those who promised to vote Labour. I think Scotland also has uh, gone rather well. Oh, very well. So we heard from uh, our regional organiser there, it's gone very well, but I haven't got any precise figures from there yet. Uh, so what, at this point, would you, uh, would you predict for an outcome? Oh, well, I predicted a Labour victory, of course. I'm not estimating the uh, number of seats. But, uh... And now we're going to Wolverhampton direct. Wolverhampton. 
is about to declare the result of the election. He will give the candidates names in alphabetical order and the number of votes which have been polled and will then declare the name of the candidate who has been elected. His Worship the Mayor. Ladies and gentlemen, as returning officer for the constituency of Wolverhampton North East, I declare that the votes given for each candidate at this election are as follows. Rini Short, 17,251. Geoffrey Ian Wright, 15,358. <laughs> Sheila Mary, Mary Wright, Sheila Mary Wright, 1,592. And I declare that Rini Short is elected as Member of Parliament for this constituency. <laughs> Um, that is a very high swing in Wolverhampton North East, uh, about 8%, I, I would guess. And in fact, if, but for the National Front candidate standing, if the National Front votes were all taken from the Conservative, it would have been an extremely close result in a safe area. Now, we have been hearing stories of, from other local polls of a very big swing in, Wolver in the West Midlands around, around there. There was a 3% drop in turnout in Wolverhampton North East. The National Front candidate loses, his depo loses her deposit. But here is a very big swing way above the others. We've now had four results, all showing... The, here is the full result, you can see it. And, uh, as I say, a 3% uh, drop in turnout from 69 to 66%, uh, a lost deposit for the National Front, a swing of something in the order of 8% there. And uh, we have now got, in fact, what is the, sw the swing? 9.1%, in fact, uh, in Wolverhampton uh, against Mrs. Short. Now, we've got four swings. That may be rather underrepresented the special factors in the West Midlands. We've got four swings, all handsomely above the amount that it would be required to return a Conservative government. And if we have a couple more, I shall be very inclined to say that the Conservatives have won this election with an adequate working majority. But I certainly would like a couple more from a couple more parts of the country that we haven't yet heard from before saying that confidently. Alan Watson. Yes, this must surely be a significant result, though perhaps not in the way that we originally anticipated that it might be. Rennie really Short is an extremely good campaigner, one of the flamboyant, really colourful figures of the Labour Party, uh, an extremely effective fighter in her constituency. So the reduction of a majority in this way is certainly of the greatest interest. The Conservative vote here, had it been contrary to the trend in the other Conservative constituencies from which we've heard the, the, the three results that we've heard tonight, then of course one could draw the conclusion that the particular impact of Enoch Powell in the West Midlands had had a peculiar effect here. But one can't draw that conclusion now because it's part of a general pattern uh, as, uh, so far as we've seen a general pattern tonight. A most um, interesting result. Let's go to our computer at the end. <laughs> I'm not calling you a computer, Graham Plow. No, no. I merely mean you're our human interpreter of the computer. Well, I'll do my best to humanly interpret what the computer's saying. Uh, it's saying at the moment that the most likely result is an overall majority for the Conservatives with a lead probably over Labour of about 80 seats. This seems to be the most likely result at the moment, but of course there's a lot of uncertainty still about that. And a further interpretation now from Robert McKenzie. Wolverhampton North East result, the fourth we've got, goes off the swingometer. We hadn't allowed for a 9.1% swing to the Conservatives, which is just the result we've got from there. The average is just on the swingometer so far, averaging just over 6% swing to the Conservatives, pointing to a majority in the 80, 90, 95 area over Labour in the next House. If the first four results are confirmed, we haven't had a marginal result yet at all, but if the first four results were, cons were confirmed, then it would be quite clear the Conservatives were going to win this election. And for a comment on that, we take you now to Birmingham and Geoffrey Priest. Geoffrey? Well, of course, Wolverhampton North East is the more working class part of uh, Wolverhampton, more working class and more coloured immigrants than in Enoch Powell's seat. Uh, it, it is in line with the prediction of uh, the Mar plan in the nearby, not neighbouring, but nearby Obrey and Hale Zoen seat, where the Mar plan prediction was that there would be a massive swing to Conservatives and that John Horner, the uh, sitting member there, would lose his, lose his seat with a Conservative majority instead of about 5,000. It does look as if this kind of thing is happening in the West Midlands. Good. And a word now, I think, uh, 
Ah, I was going to say to you, we're going upstairs to Robin Day, who have got someone with him. Robin? Yes, I've got with me Humphrey Taylor, who's Managing Director of the Opinion Research Centre. And he runs the polls which are published in the Sunday Times in the Evening Standard. And in his Evening Standard poll today, he put the Tories at a 1% lead, and that is roughly the equivalent of just over a 4% swing from 1966 to the Conservatives. Am I right? Right. Uh, well, uh, you seem rather modest about it. Well, I think it's very early days yet, and one's keeping one's fingers crossed for some time before one yes. knows what the thing's going to be. Uh, what, what do you think are the factors from your experience which might make the thing go up or down one way or the other? Uh, as compared with the polls, you mean? As, as compared to what we have in now so far. Well, I think one's got to look uh, for considerable variations. All the polls have been showing wide regional variations. Thank you. We'll come back, Mr. Taylor. Cliff? Robin, I must interrupt you because we're now going to Salford. I think for the other constituents there, Salford East. Come round over here, Mr. Bell. Come from that side. Come from that side. We're expecting now the result in uh, Salford East. That's the, the mayor, who is the returning officer, Alderman Gerald Lipton. <laughs> and it looks as if his uh, forecast is going to be right again. We'll be on the air very shortly. What was it? What was your figure? I don't know. It's about 15 odd, about 6 pounds. Well, there, there seems to be a hesitation there, and we're not going to allow it to hesitate with the, uh, the temperature really rising very high here. Robert McKenzie, we interrupted you. Well, State of the Parties, I think, next, I'm told, uh, where we see each party with two seats in the bank on the State of the Parties board. I believe we're not ready for it. I'll come back to the... There we are. State of the Parties board, two seats in the bank for each party, no gains, no losses. But the real story is on the party lead board, where you see the Conservatives are equal with Labour, have we got that? Conser party lead board? Yes. <laughs> On five results, not checking, I'm afraid they... Yes, we have got five results. Uh, anyhow, there you've got the position. Swing to the Conservatives of 5% around that vicinity, indicating a Conservative majority in the 50 to 90 range. If we could, I think the important point to make here, you know, Cliff, is that the results are coming in from around the country. We haven't got a marginal result yet, but we've had two from the South, one from Midlands, one from the North. And that's beginning to make me suspect that we've got some kind of cross-section of what's happening, and it does point strongly at the moment to the possibility of a Conservative victory. That's a point that we really ought to take up with one of our desks that we've got right the way around us. They're all sort of hooked around us. Uh, and over there on our industrial desk is Harold Webb. Harold. Uh, well, I would agree with Bob McKenzie about this. I think the significant result from Labour's point of view is this dreadful result they've got in Salford. We're now we're waiting to see what the result is in Frank Alorn's uh, case. That's the neighbouring constituency to Stan Orms. But, of course, there are a lot of Salfords around the country, and this is rather typical of a big variety of industrial seats in the north which Labour must hold to win this election. The fact that it's had a dreadful result in Salford, I think, augurs work badly for Mr Wilson. Cliff? Ah, if the city were now open, Graham Turner, who's on the next desk around, if the city were now open, how would it be reacting? <laughs> well, if, if all this is true, and if this swing is reflected in the rest of the country, I think it would be looked on as something of a heavenly deliverance by many businessmen and people in the city, because they'd all feared a Labour victory, and now it looks as though it could go the other way. They'll be particularly delighted if all this is true, and this is still, of course, very tentative, if it's true for the city. They'll be expecting Stirling to stay stronger for longer. They'll expect something, I think, of a share boom if the Tories do get back. In short, they'll expect and hope that they've got a government which they feel really understands them and appreciates them. Yeah, our, our computer from time to time will, will, will give you uh, the sort of update of what, what it's saying at the moment. David? Well, I think that 83 just is there on the figures. I suspect that the <laughs> Wolverhampton one is higher than some of the things that we shall have, and I, my own guess is that... And Salford, they're the declaring at Salford. Salford East. I, the undersigned, being the returning officer for the constituency above mentioned, hereby give notice that the total number of votes given for each candidate at this election was as follows. Frank Galorn, Labour, 15,853. 
Alan 